Um, do we have any questions from the floor about native advertising and the presentations that we've just seen? Any questions, anybody? Okay, so I'll ask a quick question. So, um, can either of you tell me what percent of your current ad revenue is made up from native and how, how this is changing? Any? Do they work? Do they work? I think they, they come um, when you start talking. <laughs> you would ask that, Dan, and I'm sure you would. Um, <laughs> I can't tell you the exact percent, uh, but what I can say is um, when we consider in the it, video and at mobile, obviously, is in a similar position, but it is one of the fastest growing uh, areas of our business. And that really is because of the success we see through it. The, the metrics you saw, the 11 minutes, is not unusual. It does drive incredible um, brand engagement. Do you have, this is a more general point about, about native, and one of the things, um, that I personally find a bit frustrating as a, as a media consumer, as a reader with native, that you, it, some of the content feels a bit fake. So there's the thing, certainly in the UK, we talk about this thing about church and state. So uh, church is the editorial, state is the, the grubby advertising bit. Are there any issues internally with people, you know, do, do the journalists object sometimes to being asked to produce native content, to produce native advertising programs? In our case, always. I mean, our content team is pretty protective of the content of the site, and yeah. I think that that's right. I mean, we don't want to force a brand. We don't want to force a message. Sometimes we have rejected dollars because the content that our client wants to produce doesn't make sense for that audience that we have. So that was, I was talking about how the content has to blend with the audience. And it's very, very important. If not, it doesn't work. Yes, yeah, so it certainly makes sense that it's the same people um, producing the same. And in fact, the thing I was talking about before, where we did the work with BuzzFeed for General Motors, that was one where BuzzFeed themselves were producing things to the same sorts of editorial standards that they use normally. Um, okay, so I can see we've got about a couple of minutes left. Um, ah, we have a question in the audience. Can we have a microphone for the audience, please? And I'll stand up because I know it's difficult to hear over there. Uh, one of your charts showed the negative impact on brand consideration uh, for uh, in the no moment. Right, so pre versus post, post dropped after exposure to native advertising. Can you help us understand that? Sorry, I missed that last bit. Um, you had a chart there of the impact yeah, on just, lower just, funnels. Sorry, this is a question. Uh, I just missed the last question. Oh, um, can you help us understand what is really happening pre versus post, right. post dropping um, down? Huh after exposure to native advertising? That's a holy grail of a question. I mean, uh, uh, there's so many campaign effectiveness studies I've done, which um, I wouldn't say they're all 100% up all the time, and that would I'd be a bit suspicious if they were, to be honest. I think the point of that particular slide is it depending on which elements of the funnel you're in, is to which content moment is really driving uh, the increase. So if you took the whole campaign, you may well see an increase, but if you start delving down that, that uh, purchase funnel and look at the different elements of that, you will find strengths in some of those moments that you wouldn't find in others. Um, to explain why there's a fall in some areas is, is, a, is an ongoing question, and I have that a lot from clients because not every campaign goes up completely in, in its entirety. Um, but I think I would suggest it's more to do with focusing on the strengths there and to build in, in terms of the planning of native advertising. Uh, the next time around to focus in on those those strengths by content. So that, that answers the question. Yes. Okay. So I think I think that's the end of the session. I think our time is just ticking away. So um, we're, all, we're all around this evening. I think if people want to ask further questions, but if I can thank my two panelists today uh, for a fantastic session. Thank you very much. Thank you.